Hello and welcome to Bookish Avec Moi. I'm back. <laughs> well, technically, I've always been here, but you know, Bookish Avec Moi has not. So, um, for the first one in uh, in 2021, I'm I actually can't think of anything special. But uh, yeah, let's let's just go through it uh, as uh, as how it is being done usually as per normal so yeah I don't have any surprise for you guys um, but um, for those of you who uh, who are not familiar uh, this is where I'll be talking about the books that I have read um, books that I uh, am currently reading books that I want to read um, books that I got sometimes I would talk about that um, and any other bookish related stuff sometimes I will also um, talk about things that are completely unrelated to books like you know stuff happening in my life but yeah I, th I think I'm gonna start with things that are not really bookish because um, I think it's kind of um, important right now at this moment kind of relevant at this moment and that is um, I just had some spicy noodle like a few hours ago and uh, I, I remembered last night before I went to sleep uh, I just I was just thinking about having this spicy noodle because for some reason I stumbled upon a video of someone eating spicy noodle on YouTube and then I was like thinking about it the whole night before I fell asleep and so um, that's why I decided to got some spicy noodle and I had them a few hours ago and it was really spicy and so to help with that I had some milk and yeah milk helped with spiciness but you know what happened when you have spicy food and milk you have two of the, of the things that would really motivate you to go to the toilet more often and that's kind of what happened. I think in a span of two hours I I I I had four trips and yeah and yeah that's kind of what happened. My um I have upset stomach right now but I think it's pretty okay. Um yeah talking about food I also had a craving recently and uh yeah, I, I recently craved for celeries. Uh, I, I have some in my fridge right now. Uh, lately, I've been having more celeries. Sometimes I would, usually I would just have like two sticks per day. Sometimes I would have four, but uh, yeah, I don't know why, but you know, before this, I didn't really like celeries, but recently I just felt like Celeries, especially when they just came out of the fridge, when they're still fresh, they're so crunchy and juicy, and it's like, oh, it's just amazing. But uh, yeah, those are the non bookish stuff that I would just kind of want to talk about. Now, moving on to the bookish stuff, um, I think I'm gonna start with what I finished this week, and I finished one book. So these are the books that I finished after um, I did the wrap-up video for January. So I only have one here, and this is uh, The Diary of a Nobody by uh, George Grossmith and Whedon Grossmith. So George Grossmith is actually the author, and Whedon Grossmith is the illustrator of the book. Um, this book is, uh, it was published in the Victorian era, written and published at that time. And it talks about this guy and um, this guy named uh, Puter. His name is Charles Puter. He just moved to a house in Holloway, London with his wife. Um, it's a fairly nice house. He's of a middle class and this character is pretty much something of a, um, a you know, a middle class guy who is, I would characterize as a butt monkey character because apparently in this novel, and this novel is written as kind of like his journal entries, um, the stuff that happens to him kind of uh, makes him look stupid and uh, makes him look ridiculous and all that. Um, so there's a lot of humor uh, from those things. I actually got a lot of giggles when I 
when I uh, read this book. And so not only we see uh, Charles Puto and his wife in this here, uh, we also see uh, his uh, his relationships with his friends, particularly um, uh, one Mr. Coming and also one Mr. Going. I know how that sounds like, but yeah, I think that's kind of like one of the jokes in here. But um, yeah, his friends and there is also his son who is always up to something, some kind of um, weird, unpredictable shenanigans. Um, so all of those things are kind of like uh, uh, some sort of a sitcom-ish book, which is kind of funny. It's quite humorous. Um, my, I do have issue with this one though because uh, I wouldn't say it's a big issue. Uh, I gave it two stars, and the main thing with this book is that it does feel kind of dragged on. Maybe it's because of the form of this book. It's it's pretty much a book that is written like a journal entry. So um, many of the events, they kind of, they don't necessarily have to form an overarching plot. So you don't have a big plot, long plot that starts at the beginning of this book and ends at the ending. Um, you have like vignettes of, you know, kind of like slice of life moments in this book. You know, just pretty much like how you would read a diary. Uh, I think it might also have to do with the fact that what's you know um, the kind of headspace that I'm in uh, I'm in right now I don't think it's probably not really a suitable time for me to read this book at this point because I don't know why but right now I'm in this moment where I just want something dramatic something that is not necessarily have to be plot driven but is strong in plot I think that's what I'm looking for right now based on the current mood the current emotional climate that i'm in so i think maybe that's why this book just didn't really work for me maybe if i'm on a vacation or if i'm resting or some you know some of the time this book would probably uh read differently so yeah that's uh the diary of nobody by uh by george and weed and grossmith and so moving on to a book that uh, to books that I am currently reading. I'm not going to talk about only the books that I'm actively engaging in. So I have um, two buddy reads and also one uh, group read. So I'm going to talk about the buddy reads first. The first one is uh, the continuation of the Neapolitan novels by uh, Elena Ferrante. And this one is what I'm reading with Kirsten from Kirsten0929. She's a bookstagrammer and also a commenter. Um, this is the story of the lost child. This one was translated into uh, English from Italian by Anne Goldstein. So this is the last the final book in the Neapolitan novels uh, where we see the main characters Lila and Elena who were uh, girls growing up in 1960s um, Naples neighborhood. Now in this book they are already grown up. They are, I think this book will also see them uh, as a rather mature adults and maybe it will show them as you know older women. So that's going to be fascinating. Um, I just find it kind of interesting that uh, this series has always been kind of marketed as this this uh, this story that talks about female friendship, and I think in a way that is true, but to a certain degree because it is not just a story about female friendship between these two characters. That friendship that uh, that happens between these two girls, it's very complicated. It's per it is perhaps something a little bit more sisterly there are some bitter moments there there are some toxic moments there so it's not necessarily a a good model friendship you know it's not friendship goals kind of story one thing i want to comment about this book i just started about the uh with the book so i can't really comment about the content but the look at the cover this cover is just stupid if you have read this uh, uh, this uh, this series, or you have read some of the books in this series, you would know that this this cover is like as um, as far fetched as it can be from what's actually going on in this in this story. So yeah, I'm not sure what what the 
what the people who are doing the cover is thinking. It's just really, really weird. Now moving on, I am also reading another book uh, with uh, another bookstagrammer and this one is The Flame Throwers by Rachel Kushner. This is the dust jacket. I don't have the book with me right now. So I'm reading this one with uh, Ali from Fox Folios. So this book is interesting. I just read like five chapters of this one and um, it seems like this book is going to take me into a totally new territory that is that is filled with motorcycles. Like, really, I read five chapters and there were motorcycles everywhere, which is interesting. Um, it was kind of difficult to get into this book uh, because of this whole unfamiliar subject matter. Um, a lot of the terms were kind of foreign to me. Um, and so it was, yeah, it was slightly difficult. I have to kind of elbow myself into this book. Uh, but I think that uh, once I uh, finish the end of those five chapters, uh, it starts to get a little bit easier to follow the story. I found it a little bit more fascinating, actually, not only due to the fact that this book is about something that I am very unfamiliar with, but also based on how it was like written. I really like the writing in this book. Um, it's, it's very specific with tons of very specific uh, words, uh, descriptors. Um, the story itself is also kind of um, fascinating so far. So basically, we see two characters. One is a is a is a young woman named Re named Reno, and another one is an older guy named Valera. So Reno is from Reno, Nevada, and she just moved to New York. And Valera is from um, Italy, and he is kind of like um, the uh, I think he's the son of. Uh, of an owner of the owner of an uh, of a tire uh, slash motorcycle company in Italy, and I think at some point later in this book there are a couple. So uh, we have not seen. I have not seen a lot uh, in terms of what this story is about, but those are kind of like the backgrounds of uh, what this novel is. Um, I expect that this book with this it is going to talk more about art. And uh, yeah, I think art is going to be a kind of like an important thing in this novel. So I guess we'll just have to see how this, uh, how this, uh, the reading of this novel progresses with me. And for the group reads, I am still joining uh, the seasonal quartet group read. Now we're in the third month, hosted by Sarah of Hardcover Hots. This one is Alice Smith's Spring. I read Autumn and Winter and I love both of those and I'm really excited to uh, read this one also. So yeah, um, just started with this one. Uh, not something that would be kind of different from the other two. I, I expect that this book is also going to be like a mix of so many different kinds of things. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this one since I really love the previous two. Also, I'm reading a book that um, I just kind of started reading in January, I think. Uh, this is All My Puny Sorrows by Miriam Taves, which is a very interesting book because this book has... Uh, it's, it's about these two sisters. Uh, one of the sisters is actively trying to help the other sister who is... Um, who is or uh, on a crisis, on a mental crisis, she is suicidal and she is depressive, and um, the the other sister is really trying to be there to support this sister. Now, this book has plenty of moments where it talks about stuff like suicidal ideation, depression, mental illness. So that certainly. A trigger warning if you want to read this book um, but the writing in this book is done in such a um, in a rather delightful way not flippant but it talks about those moments the moments between those two sisters and how they are kind of connecting with one another despite one sister is struggling with mental health issues we see those um, 
their 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 um, interaction being portrayed as something that is kind of real, and um, they're they're still capable of making jokes. And overall, this book has that um, kind of funny ambiance to it, and I just. I just love that kind of uh, that kind of writing. It it has this like really strange but nice and fitting um, contrast to it, and it overall I think just kind of amplifies that lingering sense of melancholy in here. Um, basically, even though I find certain sentences to be kind of funny and hilarious, I still feel that this book is overall a sad, sad book. That's my impression on this book so far. I am really, um, I'm kind of enjoying this. So I'm surely, uh, I'm going to finish this book. So other things, um, Rick McDonnell, he did this uh, book tip spin, um, I think one week ago, where um, before he spins a number, uh, anyone who wants to participate has to come up with uh, a list of 20 books that they want to read and uh, each of those books would have a number associated with them from 1 to 20 and on uh, January 31st he would spin a number and whatever uh, number was uh, was chosen and you know you'll have to read the book uh, on your list associated with that particular number for February and March and the number chosen was 15. So I'm not going to talk about all of the books that I uh, have in my top, uh, in my 20 uh, list of 20 books but I'm going to put them into the uh, description box and number 15 in my list is Nawal El Sadawi's The Fall of the Imam. Now this book is originally written in Arabic and uh, it was translated into English by Sherif Hetata. Uh, this book is kind of interesting. It has some really intense subject matter in it. So here it is. Bint Allah is the daughter of God, a beautiful illegitimate girl. She is falsely accused by the Imam of adultery and sentenced to death by stoning. Then, during the annual victory holiday, the Imam himself is killed. So that's really intense, yeah. That's that's uh, that is strong stuff. I'm actually just uh, in the first chapter of this book, and I think that it is it is pretty intense. So we'll see how it goes with this book. I've always been kind of interested in reading this one, but yeah, it is really intense. <laughs> I think I used that word like what? How many times so far this few minutes? <laughs> Yeah, aside from this book uh, that was kind of like chosen by others for me to read, I also asked my family members to choose what I were to read next. So basically I asked my sister, my father and my uh, mother, um, which book should I read? I gave them a stack of books and they would choose one book from that stack. So this these books are ones that they chose for me, and I think I'm going to read this book. I, I, I target to read this book in February. The first one was chosen by my sister, and this is Fresh Water by Akweke Emezi. Uh, this book is kind of interesting because I think it has some portrayal of uh, mental health issues here. Um, Ada has always been unusual. As an infant in southern Nigeria, she is a source of deep concern to her family. Her parents successfully prayed her into existence with something must have gone awry, as the young Ada becomes a troubled child prone to violent fits of anger and grief. But Ada turns out to be more than just volatile. Born with one foot on the other side, she begins to develop separate selves. When Ada travels to America for college and traumatic event, crystallizes the selves into something more powerful. Again, I think this one is another intense book. Um, really looking forward to reading this one. My mother chose something that is a little bit more epic in scope. 
a family fiction, domestic fiction. This one is by Jane Smiley. Uh, some luck. And it's pretty thick. <laughs> and uh, I. Okay, so here it is. 1920. After his return from the battlefields in France, Walter Langdon and his wife Rosanna begin their life together on a remote farm in Iowa. As the couple struggle to keep their family through good years and hard years to years more desperate than they, they, than they ever could have imagined, the world around their little farm will turn and life for their children will be unrecognizable from what came before. I guess that's vague enough, but you could totally feel that there is this epicness emanating from this book so I'm really looking forward to this one as well and then my father chose this book uh, this is The Man with the Compound Eyes by Wu Ming Yi I'm not sure if you would you can see that there's glare yeah here it is and this is originally written in Chinese uh, translated into English by Daryl Sturck and uh, this book has somewhat of a um, e eco, as in ecological slant to it, you know. So it's it's going to talk about uh, the environment a little bit. Uh, and the story goes like this: On the island of Wayo Wayo, every second son must leave on the day he turns fifteen as a sacrifice to the sea god. Atile is one such boy, but as the strongest swimmer and best sailor. He is determined to des defy destiny and become the first to survive. Ali Shi, who has lost her husband and son in a climbing accident, is quietly preparing to commit suicide in her house by the sea. But her plan is interrupted when a vast trash vortex comes crashing onto the shore of Taiwan, bringing Atilei with it. Again, interesting stuff. Um, so yeah, something that I would love to just get into. Hopefully I can read this in February. Also, I am kind of like joining uh, the TBR Tackle, hashtag TBR Tackle, organized by Jotna of Jotna's Bookscapades and also Key from Books and Key. But I think that most of the books that I have mentioned already in, uh, in, uh, you know, in this video earlier uh, can you know satisfy some of the prompts, uh, but I do kind of have uh, some prompts not yet satisfied. That I just would love to kind of you know have some books for them for a short story collection. By the way, I also got, I'm I'm also going to have the prompt in the in the description box below, so you can check that out. But for the short story collection, I am. Hoping to read this book by Eileen Chang. This is Love in a Fallen City. I've never read anything by Eileen Chang before. I know she's quite famous for that uh, Last Caution novella. I've never read that. I would love to try that one. And for um, non-fiction, I'm trying. I will try to read this one by Virginia Woolf. This is A Room of One's Own and three guineas. So basically this is like a collection of uh, essays. So those are the books that I am, uh, I have read, I'm reading right now, that I plan to read this week or um, in February or maybe up until March. Oh, by the way, I'm also um, a judge for the Booktube Prize for the fiction category. But I'm not going to talk about which category um, I'm reading for. But I'm reading one book right now because that book arrived, I think, a week ago. So yeah, I'm also reading one book for the Booktube Prize. So, that's it for this week's Bookish Avic Moi, the first one for 2021. So I'll see you again in a different one. Thanks for watching, take care, and bye-bye.